Does metformin work for fertility and pregnancy? Keep watching, we'll have some interesting discussion. Hi, I'm Ju Tio, obstetrician, gynecologist and fertility specialist. Today I'm going to talk about metformin in fertility and pregnancy. I've made a few notes myself so that I don't miss any points. Number one, what is metformin? Metformin traditionally is used for patients with diabetes. Um, it's an um, insulin sensitizing agent. It essentially increases the effectiveness of insulin in bringing down the blood sugar. Now, when and for whom we use metformin? If you look at all the researchers, they are focusing on patients with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Patients with PCOS is known to be prone to insulin resistance, i.e. they may be prone to diabetes, especially later in life. How does it work to improve fertility and pregnancy, if there's any? The hormones and the proteins of our body are all interrelated. I won't bore you with the finer details on how this actually works. Um, now, number one, what's the criteria for PCOS, which is very important? If you look at most researchers, we use the criteria um, which is set up by the Rotterdam criteria, which is um, agreed among different doctors in various meetings in the early 2000s. So uh, the three criteria, Rotterdam criteria for the diagnosis of PCOS, number one is oligoovulation. So patients with very infrequent period, they know that they are not ovulating regularly, or sometimes even patients with regular periods, but we do the tracking cycle or measure the progesterone, it shows that they are not really ovulating monthly or regularly. So that's number one. Number two is the... Um, biochemical or clinical manifestations of hyperandrogenism. Now what does it mean? Hyperandrogenism means the male hormone's effect is higher. So if you can do measurement, you can measure testosterone level, androgen profile, different things. If it shows that it is higher, then you can fulfill this second criteria. Or sometimes clinical manifestations means some patients might say, look, you know, um, I got um, hair thinning on the scalp, or hair growth on the gene, uh, the chin or the chest, or as some might say, look, I'm very prone to skin, sensitive skin, like prone to acne, etc. So the second criteria can be fulfilled. The third one is the a ultrasound scan. In the past, they say, look, if you scan, you see 13, we call them antro follicles. You know, the little follicles ranges between roughly between two to nine millimeter. In the older criteria, they say, look, if any one ovaries, more than 13 follicles, then can fulfill the criteria. But with the new ultrasound scan technology, you can see it's clearer view, you can see much smaller follicles now. The criteria has been up to a, you need 20 follicles for each side. Or the ovaries sometimes can be a bit bulky. They are more than 10 males for each side then it can fulfill this criteria. So the full field to do in terms of research, if you want to say, look, do you have PCOS to fit in that box, then you need to have two out of three criteria. Now, often I tell patients PCOS is not uh, like terrible diagnosis. Um, it's just what we are born with. There are different spectrums. Some patients will have all the tick boxes. Some patients will have very minimal. It's just to see where we are. Often, if you have too many follicles, that means too much of a good thing, too many follicles, releasing different hormones and causing the metabolic imbalance or the hormonal imbalance, causing um, the, the clinical manifestations or clinical symptoms of PCOS. About 70% of patients with PCOS may not be ovulating regularly and thus will need um, fertility help in for them to ovulate regularly and to get pregnant. 
Moving on, moving on to the metformin. Now first, let's focus on um, fertility. As I mentioned back again, what I'm talking about today is all for patients with PCOS fit in, mostly fit in that criteria. Of course, some patients may be just borderline. But let's say if we fit in the criteria for PCOS and someone's trying to get pregnant, um, needing fertility help or not, so what's the role of metformin? The other thing is when you look at researchers, there are, could be more than one research. Sometimes a, different researchers may have different results. So the way to go for it is to look for research with better quality or you know more research showing this type of picture and then make, make you reach a conclusion more easily. And often if you go for you look for societies and meetings and conferences, there are people or experts, scientists and doctors with experience um, putting those research together to um, develop a guidelines for doctors and for patients, for information for patients as well. Now looking into fertility, when getting pregnant, you have patients who can get pregnant naturally. You get patients who might need ovulation induction, like um, using Clomid, which is quite commonly used, or Femara. And, uh, and also some patients might need IVF or XC due to PCOS or combination with other things um, decreasing the chance of getting pregnant. Metformin use in all those uh, patients has been shown to increase the chance of get, getting pregnant, increase clinical pregnancy rate, and some even shows that it increased life birth rate, i.e. having a healthy baby. So for patients with fertility, um, or trying to get pregnant or with seeking fertility assistance, metformin is shown to be helpful. What about if they already got pregnant? Is Should we carry on metformin? For me, I've been uh, changing left and right for this because every few years there are more research coming out um, you know, to answer some uncertainties and to outrule that there's any... A, side effects or potential bad effects for pregnancies. In this actually more and more research lately showing that if you take metformin, if you have PCOS you take metformin um, during pregnancy, um, it shows that actually it in decreases the chance of having miscarriage in the later stage and also um, decreases the chance of having preterm labor and it seems to have very minimal side effects. So based on the latest research, it seems to be uh, barren to continue on metformin if you, are, if you have PCOS and you are already pregnant. Now, if you look at the results, they seem to be better for patients with higher weight. So uh, patients with higher weight group seems to benefit more from the good effect of metformin. That leads us to another question. Can metformin help patients to reduce weight? We're not 100% sure. Some results say, look, you know, there may be some good effects. Some might say, look, there's no effect at all. What we think, it may decrease the appetite uh, for some patients with PCOS. So in, indirectly, it may help to decrease weight, but this is not strongly proven from a good quality research. When using treatment or advising treatments for our patients. Like my previous videos, I always say is we have to look for other things. Like, is it cost effective? Um, metformin on the grand scheme is not very expensive drugs. It's a very old drug. And we have to, well, actually it's not licensed in this indication. It's being licensed for use in diabetes, but not in this indication. But it's being used very frequently and it's not expensive. And you have to choose the right group of patients, like once again, patients with PCOS. Um, side effects, yes, there are side effects. There are a few side effects. The most pronounced one is tummy upset. Patients taking metformin may quite commonly complain of uh, needing to go to the toilet very frequently, loose stools, and um, yeah, um, bloatedness and such. There are reports that if you... You know, the symptoms are more pronounced, more clear, uh, clearer when you, you just started metformin. If you carry on for a longer period of time, after over a few weeks, 
um, could be up to a month that the symptoms tend to be better and decrease. So often I tell my patients, um, you can you know start lower dose and see if you can tolerate, try to tolerate for a few weeks to tend to improve, then slowly up the dose. Maximum is 1.5 grams, which is traditionally comes in 500 milligrams per tablet, so three tablets a day. So we can slowly go up to three tablets a day, or some patients can only tolerate one or two tablets, then that's okay. Just go with the dose that you can tolerate. Of course, if it's really, really bad, it's not compulsory, you can stop metformin. So what do I do uh, to sum it up? What do I do for my patients? If patients fulfill the criteria for PCOS, then I do prescribe metformin. I just tell them, look, keep taking, um, even though if I, even if I have to give them extra treatment like ovulation induction with um, FSH injections or clomid or femara, I say, look, keep going with the metformin. Um, patients going through IVF ask them to continue as well. Should we stop in pregnancy? As I mentioned, I've changed my practice over the last few years depending on what is the um, latest research. But at the moment, I think, look, I would encourage them to continue on in pregnancy until later the third trimester. That's it about this. That's about it this time. Goodbye. See you next time.